Hey, hello. That's the spirit. Um, yeah, this is, this is the, the most genius lineup I've ever been on. I'm just used to following Joey Razdeen. <laughs> now I've got cyborgs to follow. That is crazy. And everybody's like so clever and, and, and so humble as well, you know. I design objects, okay. Good for you, object designer. You could have told me that you design objects with worms and the sun. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really great and happy to be here and honored. My name is Kachiso Lidiha. It's, uh, it's really like not a very nice sounding name. It's not very sexy at all. Sounds, sounds like an Arab getting tortured. <laughs> we are the bomb Salim. Kachiso <laughs> Lidiha! It's hardcore, yeah, yeah, I, and it's, 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 it's hard kind of being like a, a superstar with a name like Kahi Solidi Ha, you know, it's just hardcore. I mean, I tried, I, I went to America to go do stand-up and, 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 you know, and try to be an African comedy sensation. The job was taken. <laughs> but I had a good time, I mean, I was, I was great, I was nice in the clubs, everybody, you know, I perform and people come up to me and they'd be like, yo, man, you're funny, dude, you're very funny. What's your name again, dude? And then I'd say, my name, Kachiso Lijiha, and you'd see them kind of stepping away, you know, <laughs> keeping a safe distance and having that kind of, you, 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 you know, you, you seem like a cool guy, but you got a fucked up name. Um, and then I decided, you know what, screw, screw this place. And I, I, got, I decided to go to other parts of the world to go tell my stories there. And I went to, I went to Scandinavia. I went to, to Finland to go, to go be, to be Kachisoledi Khade. And I got invited to a town called Turku, you know? And I thought, if a town is called Turku, <laughs> Kachisoledi should just fit right in, right? Yeah, so, so I got there, and, and, and it was great. I mean, I had, like, my name on, on billboards and, you know, on, on merchandise, and it was very cool. And people of Turku, Finnish people, I don't know if you've been to Finland, they, they drink a lot, they, they sauna a lot. There's a lot, I think there's, like, three saunas per person. They, they kind of talk about saunas in per capita terms, you know? So, so I was like, this is, this is really dope. This is cool. And, and I, I, did this, I did this show. I remember the, the show on the night. It was really big. Uh, a bit more rock and roll than this. Um, you know, booze backstage, that sort of thing. And, and really cool. And there, there was this host, you know, this, this host who had been like, give, give, show me a good time for the past two days. And he came back to me backstage. He's like, my friend, my friend, very good. They're going to love you tonight. They're going to love you. I said, yeah, good, thank you. He said, how you want me to introduce you on stage? I said, just, just say my name. He said, yes, DC. <laughs> what is your name again, right? Then I told him, I'm Lidi Ha. He goes, good, 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 very good, very good, very good. Then he walks away, walks away. And a few minutes later, he comes back, and he's doing this weird thing with his mouth. I'm like, what? He goes, your name, please, one more time, one more time. I go, Kahiso Lidi Ha. He goes, great, good, good, good. Walks away. I'm nervous. You know when you're nervous? Because you don't know what you're going to talk about. I mean, there's like... Finish going on on stage and the people are killing themselves. So I'm just like, what am I going to talk about? Do I understand English? Then he comes back, comes back, but this time he said, like, oh, okay, now I'm ready, my friend. Give me name one more time. So, 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 so then, then I, he goes on stage and he, he's, you know, the guy who's just come off stage, kind of destroyed. You can hear the crowd kind of lose it. Oh, and then he comes back sweaty. My friend goes on stage. He's the host and he does the whole thing in, in Finnish, you know. I don't know what the hell he's saying. But, but yeah, so, 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 so I have to listen out. I have to listen out for, for, for like words. Like he might call my name in and amongst all this Finnish, you know. So I have to be really careful. You hear like familiar words. Facebook, Facebook, Tina Turner, what's love got to do, got to do. And then you're there like just 
I'm just there like kind of like, okay, okay, okay. And then he suddenly like turns, he switches to English. And I was like, oh wow, this he turns to English. And I discovered that actually in Finland, everybody speaks pretty good English uh, because they watch all their TV like everybody else in the world in English, American TV, and it's translated, uh, the subtitles, Finnish subtitles, so they're good, you know? So he goes, yes, very good, very good. This next man coming on is a very good friend of mine. Last night we drink, we sauna. He's from very far away, very far away, man. Please give a warm Turku welcome to my friend, Zakirto Zakiki. Now I'm backstage. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Everybody backstage is going, Zakirto, it's you. Go, go. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm known in, in Finland as popular African comedian, Zakirto Zakiki. Um, <laughs> and what was cool about Finland is that the, the greeting, the, the way they greet each other, they say moi moi. So everywhere I went, people say moi moi, and I'd say thank you, thank you. <laughs> But, but I mean that, and, and I mean, you probably ask yourself, then why don't you just change your name to something more convenient, you know? Something like Butterscotch Mabena. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but that, would be, that would be problematic because my, my family would, like their story wouldn't be told because they, they're very, they got low self-esteem and they need me, no, they, they need me to kind of continue this narrative of their existence somehow, right? And, and we, we all want that. We all do that. We, we watched uh, uh, Wakanda, you know, uh, Black Panther, and people spoke closer. Trevor Noah spoke closer on, at the Oscars, and everybody was like, yes, we exist, you know? We, we were, were validated because our story is being told, and that's, I think that's what I want to talk about today is I, I, I'm a storyteller, and, and I... I, I <laughs> feel strongly about telling stories. Sometimes, you know, I go, I go out there, I make television, I make, I make movies, I, I make like stage shows and stuff, and nobody ever asks for these things. I just do them. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy, and I go, I, I put money in, I go ask for money, then I go, and then I, if two years later, I come with a movie, and I say, here, let's put it in the cinema, and then the, 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 the public g gives me that resounding dude, we didn't ask you for this shit. <laughs> because because it's, 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 it's that, you know, but then I, I need to do it and I, I, ju I just have to. I started doing this as a, as a stand-up comedian right here in Cape Town. Um, like, I think 20 years ago, so it was, it was pretty rock and roll 20 years ago, Cape Town for a dark orange dude. Um, <laughs> I... <laughs> I was, and it, because, it, because of, yeah, everywhere you went, you know, you're performing in like Claremont and Kenilworth and these places, and, and the people weren't even sure what we were doing because they weren't even, they didn't know what stand-up was, really. So I'd come up on stages and, and people would think I was doing protest theater or some shit, you know? <laughs> it was... It was, it was weird, and, and, and also the comedians that I was like, I was always introduced as the black guy. Yeah, what do you name is the black guy? And then I'd come on, and it was always very important, because now you're telling your story, and you're representing a whole bunch of people. But you're in this, you know, everybody in this was like light orange. Um, and, and you... And you, you have to kind of tell, you, that everybody has like a common experience and you're like an outsider, but you're also like South African, we're all together. So it was always strange. I remember being invited to, to do um, uh, improv, you know, it's like, hey, he, he said, Bri, you want to come to improv, you know? <laughs> and I said, yeah, sure, let's do, let's go, let's go do improv. And then we got there and it's like, yeah, it's really going to be nice, it's really cool. There was a crowd there, you know, and it's like, well, I said, okay, we're going to just do some warm-up stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to tell you something and you got to act it out, right? And I was like, all right, cool, everybody, we're all lining up there. And it's like, okay, so you're, uh, you're a dentist? Performing dentistry while while on a foofy slot. Kihisa, go. Kihisa. And then I was there going, what the fuck is a foofy slide? Because <laughs> I didn't know a foofy slide. And I felt bad because I was like, well, you know, how come everybody knows a foofy slide? A foofy slide sounds like an awesome thing. 
and I did not have any idea. And it was awkward for everybody, and they tried to make, you know, make me comfortable. Okay, Kihisa, okay, um, uh, you're, a, you're a taxi driving Sangoma, go! And I would, that, that was it, right? You're, like, you're just in this kind of morass of, of, of that. you kind of like, what's your story? You need to tell your story. Um, and that's what we ended up doing. You, know, you end up telling your kind of townships, the kind of building blocks of like, like dark orange existence, you know? This is because I remember used to do sets about like how the toilets are outside where I grew up and all of that. And you have to weave these things that make you kind of a normal person in this kind of world. Because people don't know, they, they only see black people on like the news, you know, running away from like things. And so, <laughs> so it was my responsibility to, to, to say, yeah, actually, I also, I also have a grandmother, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. And, and it, it was really important. And I, it, and you'd, you'd have like other comedians, you know, who would go and you, because you, you kind of go, how do you tell this narrative? How do you, you know, what is the responsibility? Because then you'd, you'd get a comedian talking about how he stole a radio or how he can't swim. And, that, and it's always like, ah, ha, ha, I always told you they can't swim, right? And, 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 you know, you're like, sometimes you make like an ironic joke about like penis stereotypes and then people don't get it. And they're like, yeah, I told you they got a big penis, huh? you know? So, so, so it was always like a really, crazy place, a crazy thing to, to navigate, you know, but I guess well, through that you learn how to tell story and, and how to represent and, and um, so in that experience, I, I, I got to work with other guys, you know, everybody was also telling story, whether they're like a Jewish guy or a Muslim guy or whatever, and, and they'd come I, I thought, this is great because we're getting this common kind of narrative of who we are and I loved it, and I thought we need to make we need to put this shit on television, right? And I, I'd watched a show called In Living Color from America. I'd loved Monty Python. And I thought, if we get all of these guys, I asked them, do you guys know how to write? And they said, no. Um, we, we, you know, some people worked at insurance companies. Others were just like loafers. And I said, okay, cool. You guys are writers now. And we... And we convinced, we convinced the TV channel to give us a show. And we, 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 it was like myself, uh, Joey Razdin, David Cow, Lois Ogola, Riyad Musa, Jason Cope, Koki Falco, Tsepo Mohale, David Kibuka. It was like Kim Engelbrecht. It was a whole thing. And we got this TV show, and it was a hit because there was nothing else on TV. It was called the Pure Monati Show, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 shit, that, that shit was blazing, that shit was blazing, yeah. Um, and it, it, was, it was fun because I mean, it was very stressful for me because I was a 24-year-old guy who never produced anything and I had to produce a show with grown-ups, you, you know. Just, but, but, but then it, it kind of hit, it went out and it, it did that thing. It, it did the thing where we were communicating something, we were communicating a time and people were reacting to it, not just, you know, just people across the board, old ladies, you know, Jewish old ladies, young Indian guys. It was, wow, this thing is working, there's a story. Maybe as a, as a nation, we weren't as cynical, we, we hadn't had Jacob Zuma yet, you know. <laughs> we were still kind of like, yeah, naive, as somebody would say. But then that thing was, uh, I thought, wow, this is a great thing. We are finally telling a story. And I think at, on, from that level, there was a... A maturity in myself, even though it wasn't the greatest of maturities, but it was a thing of, okay, cool, this is, there's an edge, you need to kind of be honest when you're telling your story, you need to, you know, it has to be a truth from inside, it has to be a lived experience, and so on and so forth, and I thought, great, I'm going to now go tell movies, because I need to tell the story to a bigger, bigger audience, you know, and movies are just horrible experience, I don't know if they're filmmakers in here, but those things are scary. Because I work with a guy called Ronnie Aptiaka. He makes all sort of a lot of movies in South Africa. And he always has these pearls of wisdom. He says, Kiki, Kiki. One of them is Kiki. That's what he calls me. Kiki. It means Kagi, but he speaks in a strong accent. I think it's a Jewish accent. Is that a Jewish accent? Kiki, Kiki, what are you going to do, man? Kiki, oh, geez, huh? I just don't know what your sister says. It's, it's all right. It's, 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 he always is worked out. I hope he's watching this somewhere. It's all right, Keggy. It's, 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 it's not easy, Keggy. Yeah. And that's what he, he says all the time. You answer the phone. When, when the numbers come out, he's always like, oh, Keggy, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's a hard game, man. And, and, and he also says, he also says Keggy, Keggy, how do you, how do you make a, a small fortune in the movie business? Eh? 
and I say, how runny? He says, start with a big fortune, eh? So, so it's really hard. And, uh, and so we, I decided, okay, cool. Uh, me and my team of people, we were going to make movies. We are going to make a genre picture. And we were thinking, we're going to make money, right? We're going to make huge amounts of money. We're going to get Joey Razdeen and David Carl to be um, uh, like bad boys. You know, Will Smith and, and uh, the other guy. Um, <laughs> And it was great, and every time, we're like, yeah, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And we weren't necessarily thinking about kind of what truth are we going to tell, you know? We just thought, wait, we're going to make money, we're going to kill it, it's going to be a box office hit. And then it turned out nobody wanted to see David Cow and Joy Raz Dean as, 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 as cops, you know? It didn't work. I remember the Monday came, and, we, and you know when you do that, and then there's still, there's still the bank, the people whose money you took, and you need to go back there and explain to them, and then, wow, what happened? What, what happened? I don't know. Nobody wants to see Joey Razdin. And, <laughs> and the other guy is just, nah, it's not going to work. And, and it, it's terrible, you know? So we, and it's like a difficult thing because it takes so long, and you kind of go, oh, man, why? So, so actually, well, I, I, I'm supposed to show you guys things. Sorry, I forgot. Because everybody's been showing things. I'm just used to this because this is my like, regular job um, is to hold a mic this was, this was the Pure Manati show. This is the kind of shit we did. Good morning, the beast. Eh, eh, eh. I haven't declared the morning yet, Toto. Money. Good morning, the beast. I never said it was good. Oh, you are right. You're a genius. It's a terrible morning. It's a very terrible morning. Toto, have I written a speech yet? Most definitely, you're a genius. Of course, you have written the speech, sir. I spent the whole evening writing... I mean, you spent the whole evening writing it, and it should win an award. It's very good. Good, good. Now, tell me, Toto, am I the most powerful being in the world? What a question. What a question, sir. You are not only the most powerful being in the world, you are the most powerful being in the universe, apart from God, of course. Who is this God? Bring him here. Oh, it would be a bit tricky to bring him since he lives in America, sir. <laughs> yeah, that, so that was the, the sort of cross-culture. Those two guys, Ugandan guys, really good friends of mine, the, Salah Sabiti, he's now a big television writer in South Africa. David Kibuka is a producer on The Daily Show. And so that show created this kind of industry that came out of, you know, that's, uh, I'm going to take credit for that. Like there was a, a wave of comedy that came out and I also invented oxygen and walking and shit. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, I think also it influenced a lot of creatives, this show, because after, like a few months after this, these types of sketches were on TV, you would see adverts that were using similar characters, you see some of the iconography, I don't know what that's called, but yeah, well, thank you, that's... <laughs> the, the, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> um, uh, so, 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 yeah, and, and so I was talking about going into, into films, and so when, when we got into that, we, we, we realized that it's, the cost, you know, you're going to spend a million dollars or two million dollars to make a film, and you're going to sell it to South Africans, and if it's, you know, movies like your big genre movies that are supposed to make money, they cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and you can't compete. So the only way you can do it is by, by telling, like, true stories that, like, a, a st you know, they feel real to you, like, honest stories where you kind of go, okay, I've lived this experience, I know these people, and so on. So I made, we made another film. We went back to the, to the money people, to the bankers, and we said, can we have more money? And they said, what about that last money? And we said, we swear, we swear, this, this, this one's going to make money. It's going to be, it's going to be unbelievable. Can, I, I didn't want to have audio for this thing. There we go. Um, um, but it's great. Look at that. Beautiful. There are students, South Africa of now, you know. It's me being like a middle class man and pretty much close to my, ex my experience of life and the politics and all of that kind of stuff. Said, so let's do this thing. And it, it, 
people will resonate with this thing and we will be able to pay you back the bank. And the bank said, okay, cool. And we said, yeah, we've got, we've got like great people. It's going to be awesome. And they said, okay, cool. They gave us more money. And we went and made this thing. And then opening weekend came. It coincided with another movie called Black Panther. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, uh, it was, you know those Mondays where you're like, oh, God, I can't do this again. <laughs> it was really, yeah, it was, it was really painful because all of the work that we had put in, all of the months, and, and then you, you kind of go and you go, okay, I guess that is, that is what it is, you know? And we, when we made this movie, we, we kind of, it was a big passion project. It took about two years, and uh, once we, one, when we were finished making it, we, we took it to, we sent it around to festivals and the best festivals that we wanted to get into, and then the people were like, they send you those beautiful letters, we regret to tell you. It's like trying to get into a big university, and they're just like, yeah, man, you, we, we had 15,000 applications, your movie is it's very special, but just not to us, okay? Um, so, so you go, ah, oh, man, and then you go to the next person, and this didn't get in, and you're like, ah, oh, man, this is just, I don't know. And, and people still say, why, why, why do you want to do this? Why don't you just do something else? Why don't you get a job, a proper thing, you know? And you're like, I don't, I, I'm addicted to telling stories, you know? So, so we sat there, and we thought, okay, um, what are we going to do now? Our movie's not cool, it's not good enough for the world, what are we going to do? And I think it was six months later, after editing and all of that crap, and we thought, okay, let's, let's make another movie, let's make another one. Obviously, we couldn't go back to the bank. I mean, I think the bank even heard, heard about it. You know when you get to the bank and they're like, uh-uh, 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 not here. <laughs> <laughs> don't come, don't come. So we were, what are we going to do? And we, 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 th- we said, okay, fine, let's, let's use our own money. Oh, don't, you don't do that. Like everybody says, first rule, Kiki, Kiki, don't, don't use your own money, Kiki. That's a, it's a bad idea, Kiki. It's, it's not easy. Um, so, so we decided to use our own money, um, and we, we decided to make this movie. So within three weeks, we kind of like today, we decided let's make a movie, and then three weeks later, we were on set shooting. And it was a different experience because it, it just felt good, you know? It just felt easy. There wasn't like a lot of negotiations. It was like, okay, you know, it's our thing. We're just going to tell it the way we want. And we had like about eight days. Not, not that these other ones weren't our thing, but they had the bank's money. This time was our money, you know, go to the ATM to pay people. It was that kind of thing. And, and it was, uh, there was also an, an instinctive thing because we had learned so much making, catching feelings that when we were making this next movie, it just had like a flow. We were just more instinctive. And the story, we went to tell the, the story in a place where I come from. Like, uh, I come from where I, my grandmother lives in a, used to live when she was still alive. Um, uh, her ghost now is there. Um, she lives in, in Atridgeville, which is a, a township sort of next to Pretoria. And it's, it's a very specific place with very specific culture. And I wa- I'd always wanted to tell a story of there. Where even when I first got to university, I kind of had the story about people getting high in Atridgeville. And then you know, it was a coming of age story where these people plant um, weed on a, on a hill, and then eventually things don't go so well. The police are gonna come, and then they decide, like, what are we gonna do? Let's burn the weed so there's no evidence. And then the the smoke of the weed was gonna flow down into the valley of this township. And the, the image that I had in my in my head was of my grandmother getting high at the time, and with all of these and uncles and all of these people. And then I thought that in that being high, because I just discovered weed. It was my first year of university. And I thought that there'd be like a catharsis in this. So all these people all high, living in, in you know, over, over 60, 70, 80 minutes. That was the story. And I threw it out. I didn't throw it out. I left it somewhere on a shelf. And then I found it in that, that one fateful December when we decided to make that movie. And we went to this township, to Atridgeville. And we did the, also the culture of making the film. We said, let's, let's make it like how people make, you know, put put on uh, township weddings or township funerals, you know? Everybody comes together, you know, the people peeling the carrots for the food, the people slaughtering a cow, sorry, vegetarians and stuff, but yeah, they slaughter it, it's always violent and shit. Um, uh, and, and we thought, let's do it like that. And it worked, it came together and we made this movie called Matuetwe, which is screening tonight at 7.30. Because you must check it, you must check out, I'm gonna tell you more things about it. Because you have to.
Congratulations, <laughs> We have a cord. What do you want to yeah, how dope was that beat as well? I just kicked in. It's an artist called Bugzito. He also stars in the in the film. But so that film, we put it together. There wasn't even like the edit. We shot it in eight days. The the casting process. I you know the. If we couldn't find those two leads of the film, we weren't going to make it. So I went to Pretoria. There was a guy who put together 50 people in the theater group, and I interviewed them, asked them about themselves. They told me, and then I got the cast from there. And we kind of workshopped the movie, and it was really, really crazy. Then at the time, then the movie was going to come out. We were like, okay, this is really, it's an honest movie and everything. Then, then suddenly, um, uh, the, the last movie, Catching Feelings, got on to Netflix. Netflix said, we're going to buy this film, and and we're going to release it all over the world as a Netflix original. We was like, oh, okay, we don't know what that means. But then we needed the money. <laughs> we needed the money for the bank. <laughs> so we got, and they didn't give us a lot of money. They gave us enough, just kind of like, yeah, okay, cool. And we, we, it, it went there, and, and we, 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 it was a hit, sort of, because people from all over the world were like, wow, this movie, we can resonate with the characters, you know? They, we resonate. I don't even know how we do resonate with or to or whatever. There was a lot of resonance and resonation. <laughs> people were like, ah, oh, we resonate these characters. And they loved Johannesburg and they loved it because everything kind of rang true and it was people, you know, people could relate and all of that. And it was awesome. And we, we, we you know, like now we have a great relationship with Netflix thanks to that. And then we moved on. And this movie came out f four weeks ago, five weeks ago. And it's, I think we've sold 80,000 tickets. Um, uh, that's like, that's like, uh, and we spent, well, like literally we spent our own money. Well, our money and a guy called Black Coffee's money. Um, uh, but, but we, we, you know, that, I, I think the, the thing that we all learned from that is that don't got, kind of go too far when you're going to tell your stories because you are your story and that validation that you need and your people need, we, you know, do that and then let's take it from there because we want to hear these stories of ourselves. From every, I, I, you know, when I do stand up and I, like, I go into comedy clubs because there used to be like a lot of like racist white people in the world in South Africa, right? And they disappeared with a, in a great kind of alien disappearance of of 1990 something and, and I'm like wow but but that's unfair because I wanted to hear that those stories as well like if, if I go into comedy clubs and all these movies I want to see stories that tell that truth because those are important stories for all of us that you know how was it to be like living it up in apartheid having a good time you know <laughs> I mean come on come on swimming pools and everything so I I, 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 I'm, and I, I feel like it's very important. Those type of stories are great to tell. I mean, you're telling these are st stories of like weed smoking township kids. Somebody's telling stories of like Western, whatever, guys stealing sheep back in the day and, and you know, Robin Hoods of like the 1960s. Um, I think it's, yeah, we must just do that. I, and I walk around in Cape Town so many talented people and so many such great storytellers and then I, I never see enough kind of just on the street Cape Town shit as well like please comrades my time is done